So starting at the front, we changed out the propeller. We're assembling them right now. We've got one, the one behind me. When this thing flies, it'll be the first time on Earth that this happens. How could you not be excited about that? Hey guys, Be Snappy here. I'm here with Erica and she's from the largest float plane company in North America. And Harbour Air are doing something very special with their float planes. So Erica, as the lead engineer for a plane like this, what's special about it? Um, we took a de Havilland DHC-2 Mark I Piston Beaver. We yep. fly them at Harbour Air. We have about 10 in our fleet and we converted it to fully electric. So wow. we took out the R985 uh, 450 horsepower piston engine and replaced it with a Magni X Magni 500 uh, electric engine and a complete lithium ion battery pack. Is this currently a project or are you actually flying customers currently with them? We are not yet flying customers, so we have an experimental flying prototype. It's at the EAA seaplane base right now. Yep. This is a static display behind us of what it's going to look like when we do get it to certification. But right now we are uh, just testing it, uh, trying to find out all the flight characteristics, performance characteristics, how it will behave differently compared to an, an ex uh, original combustion engine. And uh, once we know all that, we're gonna take all those parts, put them into this aircraft, and then we'll validate this one and get it certified. And hopefully we'll be flying passengers by 2027. How are they actually tracking so far? What sort of flight time are you getting at? So right now, the longest flight we've taken with our experimental aircraft is 34 minutes. Yep. We're expecting that we will get an hour mission that'll include your reserve. That's one of the things we're talking with the regulators about is how we're going to actually quantify reserve for these aircraft. Should it be yep. a percentage of state of charge or should it be minute based? Uh, so yeah, one hour mission and we can go right now about 45 to 50 nautical miles on floats and we're hoping to increase that significantly when we try to go at a configuration on wheels. So at Harbour Air, you guys obviously do a lot of flights. What's the current recharge time on one of these? So recharging the aircraft is an interesting question. It's really going to have to do with the charging infrastructure that you install. So we're using a 60 kilowatt charger at the hangar. That means we're getting about a two hour charge time. Yep. But as part of our project, we're installing 150 kilowatt chargers at a couple of our locations. And that'll allow us to charge in about half an hour, wow. which is about the standard uh, downtime between flights because we need to offload passengers, load new passengers and baggage. So half an hour is about the cycle time we need uh, for these aircraft. How's reliability with the electric side of things actually going so far? The reliability has been amazing. We've had uh, really no issues at all with the engine. Uh, we know that that's something that's going to be a consideration. Uh, the upfront cost of converting to electric is going to be high, yep. but the operating cost should be less because there's going to be so much less maintenance. They're much more simple than a combustion engine. So what sort of cruise speeds are you getting out of these electric engines? Well, it's inter interesting you should bring that up. We've had a, a real change in performance with this aircraft. Uh, it really wants to go faster. So if you use the same uh, settings that you would in a piston beaver, it'll want to go about 135, 140 miles per hour. Wow. But what we're doing instead is we're translating that into using less power for a longer flight to get more endurance. Yeah. Uh, Cause that's how you calculate the reserve. That's how we get our one hour mission. So we're still, we're trying to fly then at the 105 mile an hour that it usually cruises at, but that gets us our, our mission profile. Can we see some of the main electric features for this aircraft? Absolutely. So starting at the front, we changed out the propeller. It's a much more efficient propeller than the, the original and it's a four blade versus a three blade. Yep. So we're spinning a lot slower. Instead of 2300 RPM, we're spinning at 1900 RPM and the blades are a little shorter. So we've reduced noise significantly. We're at about 20 decibels less. And that happens with the, uh, the Magni 650 motor that you see right there. It's capable of 900 horsepower, but we're yep. derating down to the original 450 horsepower of the, uh, of the original engine. Behind that, you'll see a representative uh, oil reservoir. This is a, a liquid-cooled system. It'll share the system with the hydraulic governor, so it'll be a one system driving off the, uh, the engine. Behind that, you'll see the four inverters. Yep. So the battery pack is 800 volts DC. It feeds into those inverters. They convert it to AC and then also control the motor. And then the expectation is we will have a couple of battery modules on the firewall. Then we'll have battery modules where the, the fuel bay was underneath the floor. And then back behind uh, the bulkhead there, you will yep. see that there will be more batteries there. The intent is to keep the original CFG of the aircraft. So we'll put the batteries where they need to be in order to maintain the CFG uh, and get to the, the power pack that we need. I hope to see these flying one day in the sky. Well, I can't wait till you guys come to Vancouver and fly in it yourself. Yeah.